A system dynamics model starts with a diagram showing the structure of a system. You don't need to learn a new programming language, you just need to identify how the parts are connected and input some basic math functions such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Key stocks or accumulations are identified with the box. These stocks can go up and down based on their flows or rates of change. The advantage to moving from a stock flow diagram to a running model is that you can see what happens to the accumulations in the system over time. So the diagram isn't just a static picture of a system, but rather it becomes dynamic, like a moving machine or organism. Here's a simple example. Let's say we have a population of deer. The number of deer are represented as a stock. They can be born, adding to the population, and they can die, subtracting from the population. How many are born depends on two factors, how many deer there are, and the birth fraction, that is the percentage of deer that will give birth in any given year. How many die depends on two factors, how many deer there are, and the average lifespan. To keep it simple, Let's say that we'll have 100 deer to start, and that the birth fraction will be about 20% of the total deer, 0.2. That takes into account that about half of the population will be female, and some of those females will be too young or too old to give birth. To figure out the number of births in any given year, we multiply the number of deer by the birth fraction. Again, to keep it simple, let's say the lifespan of a deer will be about five years. To figure out the number of deaths in any given year, we divide how many deer we have by the lifespan. So on average, one-fifth of the deer would die in any given year. Can you guess what will happen to the deer population given this simple structure and set of rules? Let's find out. Notice that the deer population stays exactly the same for 20 years. Now let's make a simple change. We'll change the lifespan to 10 years so the deer will live twice as long. What do you think will happen to the deer population? Even though the birth fraction is the same, more deer are born because fewer deer die. This allows the population to grow over time. Let's try one more option. We'll reset the lifespan back to five years and then lower the birth fraction. What do you think will happen now? Now notice that the deer die out because fewer are born each year than die. This is a very simple model and we can explore questions about what would happen if the initial population was higher or lower, if the birth fraction was higher or lower, and if the lifespan was higher or lower. Yet this model is very limited. Let's say there was a problem with the deer population. Perhaps there are too many or too few deer. We can add other aspects that affect the population in order to understand the problem and consider leverage to improve the situation. These might include elements like food for the deer, predators, and more. To create some of your own models, check out the book Model Mysteries that includes fun, step-by-step -step instructions and examples throughout. Thank you for watching this short introduction to System Dynamics Models. Brought to you by the Creative Learning Exchange.